Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our IPM series, today we are going to see how we can automate the iOS devices Safari browser by using IPM. So, so far we have seen how to automate the iOS native applications, right? But today we are going to see the browser applications like any browser applications that you are loading into your desktop browsers. The same applications you can also load into the browsers of your iPhone devices, right? So today we are going to see how we can automate by using Appium. You cannot automate these browsers by using your Selenium, but the concept is pretty much similar. So that is what we are going to see. What are the differences are there or what is the different way to automate and what are the similarities are there? Those both things we will be discussing today. So. In our previous session, we have seen how to automate the Android Chrome browser, right? Pretty much the same concept we will be using for Safari, but a little bit different. So that difference also we will try to understand. Okay, so I have taken this is my Safari browser. So you can see this is my iPhone simulator or you can even attach a iPhone device, real device to your computer by using USB cable and after that you open the Safari. Now in the Safari browser is one of the default application when you get your simulator or the real device like we have Chrome for Android, right? And you can load any URL that you want here like how I have loaded a sample uh, Source Labs web application actually here. Okay, so the thing now the there are two things actually to automate this particular browser applications. One is how to be inspected because the same application when you load into the desktop, right? It will be different and uh, different in the sense sometimes the locators will remain same, but the operation because of the, its responsiveness, right? The area that uh, this particular application is having, it will be little bit different actually. So you have to inspect the elements based on the application is here into your mobile device only. Now, how do we inspect? I cannot right click here. You can see that like how we used to do inspect element in our desktop applications. But for that actually we will use the concept called remote debugging. Now for this Safari browser to automate this uh, or to inspect this Safari browser application, I will take this Safari browser up my desktop. Okay, I have a Mac operating system in that Safari is coming as a default. Now here what you need to do, you have to go to the develop option. You can see that this is the menu option or the toolbar option develop. And here you can see something called as a simulator. Now the current simulator is iPhone 14. That's how it is auto detecting. If you have connected your real device, that real device name will be coming here from the develop toolbar. Sometimes this develop will not come as a default if you are doing for the first time. What you need to do, you need to go to the Safari browser, go to this Safari toolbar option, go to the settings. And here you will see something called as advanced and here you will see a checkbox called show develop menu in the menu bar. You have to check that. That's it. After that, this develop option will be appearing here and then you have to go to this option here your real device or the simulator and you can see that Safari it is showing Safari and under Safari you can see the browser application which I loaded that is displaying so just click on that so it gives you the HTML dome of that let me maximize this okay and you can see it is now similar to how you were doing your desktop application right same thing is coming now you will not see a preview of your application actually rather what you can do anything that you will highlight here right or you inspect here you can see that uh, if you keep inspecting you will see the highlight portion here like let me show you that if i want to highlight the email field so you can see go here i think this one and you can see that so this is your id equal to user hyphen name and now there is another one id equal to password or data hyphen test attribute equal to password and here you can see the name equal to login hyphen button like this you can identify and as i mouse over here you can see that the respective highlight is happening there okay so that's that's a straightforward way to kind of inspect your safari browser elements into the 
remote debugging okay now the second thing is that how do we launch this particular safari browser in native applications we used to go for bundle id and then the device name the execute test options right to launch this particular safari browser and then we used to act on those elements same concept we will be applying here and one thing to note it that you have to run the IPM server as it is, whether it is native or the web application, you are going to automate it. So for Safari browser, there is no Safari driver explicitly you need to download and keep it into your code because Safari browser comes within a built-in Safari driver in that. So there is no extra place where you can, what you call, download a specific version of the Safari driver. The Safari browser when you install the Safari browser, the driver, Safari driver is coming as inbuilt. So that is the benefit of that. So Selenium or the or your Appium need not to worry about whether the driver is compatible with your browser or not. Fine. Now I can run the Appium server as it is. Like we used to do auto Chrome download option right in our Android. Here it is not required. So you can simply run this Appium server and keep it minimized. That's it. Now after that, let's come back to our code base. And what I'm going to do, I will be using, I'll just copy paste some of the iOS thing here. So let me just copy this one and put it here. This is a test ng test, empty test. And here what I'm going to do, I'll first give my device name. Now this is iPhone 14 actually, you can see from here. iPhone 14, the OS version is, uh, iOS is 16.2. I don't really need the set platform version, uh, platform type or something as iOS because XQA test means the IPM understand it is a iOS device. And here Safari, actually this is also not required at this moment because I don't have any pop-ups. And instead of a bundle ID, what I'm going to do, I will put with browser name and here as I discussed in, in terms of the Android Chrome here, this with browser name accepts the Chrome, uh, the browser name. It could be Edge, it could be Chrome, Firefox. At this moment, Safari I'm automating. That's it, your options are done. Now what are you going to do? App Factory dot launch iOS launch app and you need to give the options. Now if you're not understanding what does this launch app does, if I go inside, it simply does these three lines of code. What it does, driver equal to new iOS driver, new URL and options, whatever. Now in case of uh, normal, uh, your desktop browsers, you used to do that driver equal to new Safari driver or new Chrome driver. This is new iOS driver you need to do. And set driver I'm doing because this is a getter and setter of that. This is a framework concept which we have discussed initially. That's pretty much it actually. This is doing actually. So this is going into two different class levels to uh, it is hidden the implementation as simple as that. Fine. Now when I execute this particular code base, right, the Safari browser will be launched. But that browser URL is not yet launched. So it means that we have to do explicitly that. For now, I'll just do some thread dot slip so to make it a stability, but nothing to worry about that. And how do I access the driver object? App driver dot get driver. Okay. In normal cases, if you are writing a flat list, there is no framework concept. You can simply say driver equal to new iOS driver and that driver you can utilize here. Okay. Dot get. Now here onwards, all your Selenium concepts will come into the picture actually here. Okay. So I'm doing get. Now what I need to do, I need to give the URL of the application. So And after that, I will be writing the login functionality. So what I'm going to do here, I will say dot find element and then by dot ID. We have understood how to inspect it, right? So I'm using those concepts, username. And here I will say send keys. And that username is standard underscore user. Okay. And I'm writing this and here after that the password, right? The password is uh, password only is ID uh, double S. Okay. And password will be secret sauce. I will show you where it is written secret underscore sauce. 
and you can see that here if you come down the accepted usernames are standard underscore user and the password for all these usernames are secret underscore source. By doing these three lines of code, I could able to log in this one actually. So let me show you that. And in this case, you can see that uh, if I'm typing from my keyboard of my computer, it's not happening. I'm typing now. So what you can do, there is a way actually where you can hide this keyboard and you can literally use your keyboard of your desktop actually. So for that, you have to go to here and then go to the I underscore O here menu bar. And after that, you will see a keyboard and you can see connect hardware keyboard. And in this case, now I'm typing from my desktop keyboard actually and then click on enter i think i have given wrong one okay now you can see that uh, it is appearing and then if you see that uh, the chrome browser which you were automating right uh, like for an instance come back here now it's a new screen right uh, we were only able to identify the logins but now here i want to highlight or I want to identify this swag labs after logging in I need to make sure that this is displaying or not so for this you have to go here under this and you can see that app underscore logo is your class name so you can simply copy this HTML here and come back here and now this is your so you have to make sure that uh, this particular element is displaying or not after logging in so here i don't use any uh, what do you call thread dot slip rather i will be using the new web driver weight that is nothing but the explicit weight uh, now under this i need to provide two things one is the driver context uh, and then the duration so my driver is this one right and this is pure selenium concept so duration dot And after that, I will be coming here dot until expected conditions dot, I think BGB or presence of element, I element located by dot class name. And what is the class name that actually I can get it from here. The class name is app logo. And here you just give that and that's it. You wait for some time and then if the login becomes successful, and the wait is successful and it is appearing then you don't need to worry about that you just wait for some time so that you can see the login page two seconds we need to wait and after that it should quit the application actually here so get quit that's it you need to do so we will see two scenarios one positive case where this wait will be working fine and the negative scenario where the login is unsuccessful fine so i have uh, my appium server running the this is now going good so i will just go here and i will kill this safari browser so that it will auto launch with this particular code base fine and i'm running this and you can see that a safari browser is launching it should now load the url which i specified and it should enter the and you can see that it logged in wait for that header and then it should close and everything becomes successful that's why you got a pass scenario. Let's say I'm giving a wrong password here, secret sauce one actually I'm giving. And let's rerun this quickly. And you can see that it, it now entered the wrong password and it will wait for 30 seconds to get that header object actually, which we have identified. And it should give me the timeout exception because it didn't get that object. And as you can see that it is throwing some error. Now let's see what is that error it is giving. And you can see that a timeout exception because it waited for this app underscore logo. That is nothing but the header. 30 second it waited with a 0 0.5 second interval pulling actually. And then, and then if you go to this, it says that this element is not able to locate it. That's how. So as you can see that the first part till this one, is more into the Appium concept. Once you have loaded that URL, everything else you can do with the, all the Selenium concepts, you can use it here. So that was actually a quick overview of how you can inspect and automate the Safari browser on your iOS devices.
so we will be seeing some more interesting topics like this in our upcoming sessions so stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel thank you for watching